Hey guys, today I am going to be demonstrating a new Linux distribution for you guys today. This is Elementary OS. It's the first Elementary OS preview I've done on this channel. And today we're going to be looking at Freya 0.3.1. That's its specific version number, which, as I understand it, is based on the Ubuntu third iteration of its latest long-term support release, 14.04. So it's got a nice stable base. It's got all that Ubuntu technology beneath it. Um, but today I'm going to be looking at mostly the UI of the elementary OS known as Pantheon. Um, and I've had more than a few requests to actually take a look at the elementary OS. So I've already taken about four hours to take a look at it to sort of do some tasks that I'd usually do on my main OS. This is by no means a review, um, but it's maybe more of a first impressions kind of video. So as you can see, I've got it straight up on here. And if you have been following this channel for any length of time, you will know that um, this is going to be done from inside a virtual machine. So the responsiveness and some of the uh, some of the things that you might see in this distribution might not be um, the same on a desktop uh, deployment of this operating system. It might be faster if you were to actually install it install it onto a computer yourself. This is just installed on top of another distribution on my computer, so it's a significantly um, using significantly less system resources than it would do on a on a full full blown desktop. Okay, so without further ado, let's um, well let's take a look at the basic UI. So. This is the Midori browser that it comes bundled with, and that is a particularly interesting choice in and of itself. Midori, I quite like it. It's not exactly stable. It has crashed in the time that I've been using it within the last four hours of, of playing with this distribution. Um, but it is very, very lightweight. As you can see here, I've got top loaded up, and it even if I re refresh a website, you can see that it, it really doesn't use much in the way of resources at all. Um, so that's pretty good even yeah so it is actually a very very sort of light uh, uh browser but that being said e elementary is clearly aimed at new the newbie market people who might be this might be your first linux distribution and as a result of that i don't know if midori is the browser that you want to introduce people to linux with um, it seems like well it's not exactly stable and it really isn't full featured. It's you know like a lightweight alternative browser where something like Firefox or Chromium might have been a better fit. But they've made that decision, and I think they've made that decision because it, it fits in with the UI significantly uh, quite well. So anyway, um, this comes with Midori. I quite like Midori as a secondary browser. I, I don't think I could use it as a, as a primary browser, although some people do. Um, and. Uh, but it works. It works quite well. Okay, so anyway, um, one thing that I do like to look at when it comes to distributions uh, is the website itself, the website that you actually download the distribution from, because this to me shows you a lot about where they are in terms of the UI space, the marketing that they're thinking of doing, the, the amount of thought they've put into the wider project and not just the code itself. So this is the Elementary OS, very clean um, website, fast and open replacement for Windows and OS X. So it tells you exactly what it is right there at the top. And there's not too much text, nothing to, to bowl you over. You've got the blog, you've got support, um, you've got the store, if you're a developer, and you can get involved. So it's, you know, it's got a great layout there, like you know exactly where each of these pages take you if you want more general browsing, you can sort of go down. And then you can download, of course, you can download Freya here. And this is the controversial sort of donations page in, in sort of in pre um, preparation or in preface to the actual downloading of it yourself. Uh, it asks you to put in 5, 10 or 25 or a custom amount, which can be zero to download Freya. And then you can download it either through torrent or um, or as a, as a direct link. And then you sort of do that from then and carry on. So it's actually quite, it's quite easy enough. And it's got some introduction to the apps. So as a website, um, yeah, I got to say actually, it's it's one of the better def def defined uh, and designed websites. It doesn't overload you with information. There's plenty of it around if you're looking for it, um, and you can ask questions on support. So that's really what a website really should be. Um, I think one of the big missteps that Fedora have taken is that they use they have three different versions. They have a version for a cloud image, they have a version for running on a server, and they have a version for your home desktop machine. They don't call it those three versions by those names. They call it something little like I think Workstation is the the desktop variant, which to me wasn't immediately obvious right away. But I like the fact that they've told you what image you want bang they've given you one desktop 
image and I really actually like that straightforward very very easy even though I gotta say I was very very impressed with Fedora 22 their website does kind of overload you a little bit with too much information they're very very professional they're very very technical but they're not necessarily the most newbie friendly and you can see that the the biggest deployments of Fedora are on workstations in professional environments whereas elementary OS definitely looks like a home distribution and that's fine that you have different distribution for work and home in fact it almost in a way makes sense so uh, we've had a look at Midori interesting choice of software they use the Ubuntu Software Center in elementary OS which it's exactly the same as the Ubuntu one. If you've got Ubuntu, feel free to just check it out now. Um, the icons haven't loaded with me. They didn't load the last time I brought it up. Calendar, that's the office. Ah, but there is a uh, the screenshot there. It's not a bad software center. It's a bit simplistic for mine. I'm, I'm a fan of either the command line or the synaptic package manager. But this is good for, for people sort of just, just getting into it. The Ubuntu restricted extras again. Um, that's that's not labelled very well, but um, yeah, it's the same old software center. There's not really much to um, to talk about there. If you like the Ubuntu software center, you can, uh, and you can also again download and install other software centers. Now, I don't usually get too fixated on the included software into a distribution. The only reason I bring up the Ubuntu Software Center and Midori is that these are just two particularly unusual choices. Let's have a look at the the applications menu so we'll just minimize the terminal there because this is actually one of the things I think they've really got it completely on point with look at that there is nothing except alphabetically arranged icons to all the software in your system and there are a few things I like about that first I like the elementary have had the foresight and the awareness to not actually install as much software as they can for the sake of being inclusive but rather just provide an easy installer and just the bare minimum of applications. People use different computers for different reasons, and as a result, bundling a whole bunch of pre-thought-out software isn't gonna isn't gonna benefit most people in reality. Um, but it gives you the basics. It gives you the camera. It gives you email. It gives you music, and it goes on to page two. So you can see it's definitely slim, slimmed down the amount of included software, or it's re like arranged it better. So, for example, um, there is um, a system settings page here so all your system settings instead of them being bundled in the applications menu like they are with some other desktop environments and distributions it's all here in one place again very very nice very very nice and I, as I understand it I think this is all GTK3 compatible um, or in fact it might even be built off of GTK3 I'm not 100% sure of that off the bat but I do know that it's very well maintained very up to date and it is uh, it seems like this all of this comes across as a spin on GTK3 and, and GNOME 3 um, photo manager, notepad, screenshot, yada yada. You can sort of pretty much expect to see those there. So, and uh, what is actually quite interesting, again, as oh, and also with the applications menu, you've got it categorized there as well, and that stays. That switch there stays. So I can go ahead. I can carry on with my my terminaling, and I can come back and. and I can then. So that is a very nice, easy, almost traditional style menu, and you've also got the search which I can't do. You do search and you could do like Geary and then those are that. I think you can just, yeah, you can just sort of click on applications. Uh, it might be that you can actually assign a key to it, like the meta key or the window key. I can't do that on the account of being in a virtual machine, but yeah, you can just click applications and if I type in email, does that work? No, so you have to know the applications. There you go, Geary. And then that cracks you open and then uh, I haven't uh, had a look at Geary on this distribution, but from what I know of Geary as an email thing, I consider it personally a bit more, I suppose, a little bit bare bonesy, not sort of wonderfully, amazingly full featured, but it does the job before you're looking for is your run of the mill email client. So yeah, uh, a big thumbs up from the applications menu. It's not trying to be anything it's not. I hate it when menus try and be these all inclusive lifestyle managing applications. They're not. They're just something I, I basically want to get my application open with as few clicks and as little mouse movement as possible and that's a good way for going for it if you're running a, a machine or if you set up an elementary machine for a like a friend or family member they're not super linux savvy this is a good choice because of, of just the sheer simplicity of the menu 
they do obviously have to work past things like gear email is email midori is web browser and you know it might have been a little bit more user friendly to include the application descriptions rather than the application title something which like linux intermediates just sort of take for granted oh midori is a oh sorry that didn't mean to knock the microphone they go yeah midori that's the standard web, you know that's a web browser everyone knows that's a web browser well no not if you're new to linux you don't midori is not well known on windows at all um, and even the actual build image the binaries uh, available for windows are, uh, like they just don't work with the window the whole whole windows in, you know infrastructure like um midori is designed to run in a gtk environment you stick it in a windows environment it's not i'm not calling it a fish out of water but it's certainly not its native environment and nor is it i think that midori is is developed for windows really as maybe a transitional tool for or people who use it on linux who then have to use a windows machine or something to to that effect okay now this is the multitasking view down here at the bottom this is quite interesting so let's pull up midori again and then it's saved it also if you notice right so this is it um full screen midori is full screen now there is like this invisible very thin bar like it, it tries to make out that these are like almost like borderless windows like it's some futuristic design but what it actually kind of feels like is that the title bar is just very very thin right at the top that i double click to maximize and restore because there is no restore button on, on a lot of the applications because they've been pushed out of the way um and it looks like it's oh look at this it's a trendy borderless kind of window space saving but it's not you're just recuperating s space that you've well, you, you know, you it, it's I don't know. It it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's like a, a sleek design as I feel the designers thought it was. Um, okay. Anyway, so we've got our two windows open here. This one has like a more obvious title bar. This one is like ashamed of it, maybe. Um, so let, to switch between the two, obviously, when we're in windowed mo windowed mode and restored windows, this is just you just click from one to the other, right? Now we've got one that is maximized, right? Blocking even our dock at the bottom. So we have to do the old auto hide, which is significantly a significantly trickier on a on a virtual machine because I don't have, you know, my mouse can just slip off the bottom of the screen. So anyway, we'll click on the multitasking view because that is basically our task manager, as it were. And then we can choose our window and we can even choose to open a new desktop now. There could very well be some nifty gliding effects here, but again, the uh, virtual machine has taken them out. Could very well be, could be wrong on that one. Okay, and then we can switch between the two, or we could even close our programs from a distance, right? I think so. I think this is just, uh, oh, right, it wanted, um, it wanted, can I control C out of it? Yes. Okay, so what it wanted us just to uh, confirm that we want to quit. So now we can go up here and we should be able to just exit that. Boom. And there we go. So to replace the taskbar, we've got a button. Now, considering that like since Windows 7, the default has been if you want to access your task, you, you know, your list of open processes or your list of open programs rather, um, you have to click at least once either either it be a grouped menu or something like that that's been like the default way for a while rather than what i consider to be the really good old-fashioned way of just lining them up across a bar on the on the bottom very similar to how mateo doing it now uh there's an option in gnome tweak to do it the, the way that kde does it um the way that classic shell does it on the windows distributions and i think even windows 10 have decided to go back to that but i think there might very well be some window grouping or whatever um ultimately I feel that this is a step backwards, actually requiring another click to switch over di um, distributions, uh, not distributions, to switch over windows, but um, there's still Alt-Tab as well. Alt-Tab works quite well. Um, can I do it now? I need another window to open by the looks of it. Okay, so I kind of like how that, that's, I mean, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Um, so Alt Tab works quite well, and then to minimize it, you can just. Sh and I do like the fact that Open Windows, you know, this works in the exact same way that the Mac one uh, and the uh, Mac OS works. So there's that. Um, 
calendar up here, notifications up here, that's notifications from Geary Mail, wireless, mm, what's it use for the sound settings? Ah, so it uses the good old, um, not Alpha Mixer, um, <laughs> Pulse Audio configuration utility. And that's good, because it allows you to change the volume from for, for specific applications, which is amazingly useful if you are doing anything like the recording get up I've got going on here. It's incredibly useful that you can just silence a program that might not you know, necessarily want to be silenced or whatever. It comes with um, a great set of background images as well, something which I've noticed that most distributions are really getting on top of these days, so we can go to desktop. Look at all of these. I don't like the very thin slider bar here, because as uh, since I use a trackable rather than a normal mouse, uh, it's, I have to basically click on it, which is uh, why I kind of like where GNOME 3 went with the, instead of having a slider, they have little bullet points. You click on the top bullet point, on the next bullet point down, on the next bullet point down. Um, and that's a really useful way of, of uh, allowing either touch screens and um, trackable mouse, trackable mice to actually navigate around um, really quite easily. So, uh, yeah, like, there are some really good background images here. Um, I assume they're all Creative comment, uh, Creative Commons um, at attribution, attribution? You know, the one where you have to attribute it. Um, but yeah, loads of great um, loads of great backgrounds, loads of great... So, I think I'm pretty much coming to the end of it now. I think I've, I've pretty much run out of things to say on, on elementary OS. The long short of it, yeah, actually, really quite a solid distribution built on a really solid foundation. Yes, I do consider Ubuntu to be a pretty solid foundation with great tech. And I think that more distributions, I, I think this, it's not necessarily inherently a, a, a bad thing that a distribution is based on Ubuntu because Ubuntu is common technology. It means when someone builds an application binary for an Ubuntu distribution, then it works on Mint, then it works on Elementary, then it works on all of the others. Um, there is no doubt that there are a lot of Ubuntu-based distributions which are seeking to reinvent the, the desktop, and it almost seems like any distribution worth its weight now has its own desktop environment, this being, of course, Pantheon, uh, which, due to the cross-compatibility between Ubuntu and um, Elementary, you can actually install Pantheon, you can actually install the... Um, user interface, the desktop environment on any Ubuntu spin just um, just by adding the PPA and downloading and installing how you would with any other piece of software. So there's that as well. Uh, some people are a little bit sketchy uh, towards in um, elementary because there has been controversy about how their donation system works on their page uh, in, this, in the way that, have I still got it up here? Yes, I do. Okay, so it were in in the same way that um, it doesn't give you like a zero. It doesn't imply that this software is gratis free. Um, or that, does it say at the top a f fast and open replacement? So it doesn't even say it's f like free because it doesn't necessarily want to imply that it's free. It wants to imply it's a pay what you want model um, rather than a than a, a free for with do donations. I think there is something of a distinction there. Now you can of course put in zero there and and, and download. Um, or you can sort of go over to PayPal. I personally don't think that it's necessarily um, a bad thing that distributions are trying to fundraise. As you can see here, they've got a, a Patreon here. Uh, and their Patreon, in all fairness, considering the number of projects I've seen get quite well funded, this is actually n sort of not really that that great in terms of the amount of money that it actually raises. Uh, maybe that's because Patreon isn't their primary source of, of income or their primary source of generating revenue, in, but rather the front page of their website is, quite possibly. Now, a lot of people don't like the idea that Elementary are clearly trying to take a lot of opportunities to ask you for donations, and they even imply by not including a zero button here that you have to donate. Now, there have been, and I think there have been some back and forth between various members of various communities about this but the way i see it is it's certainly no shame in asking for for, for money these things like these developers deserve money for the work that they put in i also understand that elementary 
they disperse their their fundraising to the software that's included on the distribution as well. So there is a possibility, and I I, I can't remember a source to back this up with off the top of my head that for example like Midori, Midori would not be as well funded as it is if it wasn't for the elementary OS sort of funding that, that trickles down um, and and other software that, it get, that gets included so there is I think that um, and also they don't appear to use any kind of dirty trickery in any of their like I haven't seen anything here that implies that it's trying to leak money out of you the only sort of semi um, thing here is is that it uses the software center where there is paid for software available. Um, I personally would not mind them just putting like sprucing up the software center and actually putting more worthwhile apps in there that we can pay for. Like some apps, I you know I, I wouldn't mind paying for. Um, but I think that uh, that there's a there's a lot more to it than that's a little a little bit more complicated as these things more often than not are. Um, all in all, yeah, I do like this as a distribution. In all fairness, it is. It does seem like it's in a saturated market. I mean, Linux Mint do a fantastic job. Um, Ubuntu uh, is alright, I guess you know. Uh, but Kubuntu, the KDE spin-off, fantastic. Lubuntu, the LXDE spin-off, again, fantastic. There are more great desktop distributions than we've ever had for Linux and that in another way is a great thing but the only thing that almost seems to distinguish them is their desktop environment um, there's a part of me that thinks that a standard desktop environment would make more people adopt Linux faster um, and I think that that's what some people or at least Canonical are trying to make what uh, Unity is but Un Unity has a so many more problems than just the ones that people are aware of there's just you know it is not as open and Libra as any of the other desktop environments. Um, it's straightforward. It's easy to use. It's not wildly dissimilar to anything I've used before. I like what they've done by simplifying the menu. I like the fact that everything seems to be not too far away. Everything seems to be close at hand. You've got the notifications at the top. You've got very straightforward menu. And you've got fast access to useful tools down here at the bottom. There's not really that much more you can ask for. I personally prefer Linux Mint on, like it's not very customizable and Linux Mint is very customizable. So I like Mint on that front. I also like, and the re real reason I like Mint is because it um, comes with some fantastic uh, multimedia codecs, which is why I'm kind of almost anchored to it in a way. Um, but this is definitely like a good contender outside of that. Um, it's definitely worth a shot. I can see why so many people have requested that I take a look at it. Um, and yeah, color me impressed, I guess. I don't think I have any particular reason to switch to it. I've recently been trying out the latest um, releases of GNOME. And I've got to say, my opinion on it is actually evolving quite positively. And that effectively means that I am happy to use any des desktop environment as long as it's not Unity. Um, and as a result of that, I don't know, I feel like I'm almost spoiled for choice, or I feel like, why is there another desktop environment being uh, worked on when there are just so, you know, we, we, we have an abundance of really great desktop environments, but we are lacking so many other different types of software. So I, I kind of have those kind of feelings towards it. All in all, it's polished, and they've clearly gone for the polish. They've clearly gone for for the user experience and I think more distributions need to do that this is clearly trying to answer a particular problem which is the you know is there a newbie friendly distribution that is truly newbie friendly um, and I would say that there isn't but I, I'm glad to see that this is actually making strides towards changing that so that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching I know these videos are a little bit rambly and they go on for a while um, but um, I gotta admit uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty decent distribution actually. Um, I don't really, you know, I'll, I don't really know what else to say about it that I haven't already showed you. So thanks very much for watching, and um, until next time, I have been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.